What is going on, my baboon brothers, my simian sisters, uh, DJ's here with another Advanced Wars by Web replay analysis. Today, we have ourselves another high-level Global League match, and actually, it'll be a quite instructive match because we have a special guest joining us today, Mr. Lagatua. How are you doing, man? It's great to be here, and looking forward to giving you all my secrets for this great game. All right, guys. So, Mr. Alagatu or Ugugula, as I formerly knew him, uh, he is the number one ranked Fog player, number one ranked overall player right now. He's shot up to the top. He he topped Go Seven. He topped Torred Red. He's top Star Flash. So we want to know his secrets. How did he get to the top? He, he actually has a YouTube channel. You guys can check that his YouTube channel. He is very in depth, granular analysis. His videos are longer than mine, typically around like an hour and a half, two hours, right? So very yeah, in depth. Right look at how to play advanced wars i like to think of advanced wars casters as on a scale you have mangs in the entertainment value area and then you have people like go seven alagatua and the more robust in-depth granular why did i do this move my concepts behind this move and i try to be in the middle entertainment teamed up with some information and uh, analysis so today I'm hoping to bring that really robust knowledge of advanced wars and really teach guys uh you guys how to play a little bit better in fog so today, I'm going to be a partial student as well. We're all going to learn today uh, from one of the best. So I'm excited, man. Are you excited? I'm thrilled. This is a really fun game to, to talk about. And there's a, a lot to, to go into. Um, the map is good and the matchup is good. And I can't wait to start. Yeah. So this is actually a global league match against Rip. And Rip is a very strong player. I have actually lost to him a couple times. I think I'm 0-2 against him. He's like 1650, at least 1600 player. Uh, both standard and in fog he beat voice of akasha in standard for god's sake like he's a very strong player he also shot to the top he was like a 1200 1300 level less than six months ago and now he's just near the top so this is honestly one of the best matchups uh, i've seen in a while since go seven faced tordred and fog so very excited to look at this match and it's also a tier two matchup with the legendary eagle versus olaf matchup uh, so there's a lot of things to learn from that but before we get into that Let's talk about this map here, Quota, Iota. It is in the Global League rotation currently. It is a three base map, but the trick is it has two airports and two comm towers. So you're gonna have a lot more copter battles. You're gonna have a lot more one hit KOs that you might not have usually uh, with regards to anti-air, maybe on infantry and uh, cities or other KOs as well. Uh, so Alagatu, when you were looking at this map and you saw this, uh, what, what were your first thoughts on this map? So this is, first of all, my favorite map currently in the, the really? rotation. Okay. Um, yes, this is my favorite one. Um, and so I've actually played this map uh, a couple of times before, and I think um, my experience advantage uh, ultimately uh, made a pretty big impact on this game. Okay. Um, the the first thing that I I think I'd call out about this map is the the base reinforce paths. Mm. Um, you're base that is closest to the center of the map has an unimpeded uh, access to the uh, strong side comm tower. So for, for player one in the bottom right, that's going to be towards the bottom left comm tower mm, okay. and, uh, and vice versa for the player two. So um, that kind of defines what your strong side is going to be on okay. this map because that is the fastest vehicle reinforcement to your areas of the map where there's going to be fighting. Um, and really everything Kind of stems from there, um, defining your strong side, but then also um, you have this black boat on the, the weak side as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have a little bit of a, a same dynamic as you would on a map like Isis, where um, you have very fast vehicles to your strong side, but you also have pretty fast infantry reinforcement to your weak side as mm -hmm. the black boats can kind of ferry infantry up um, to get into that corner. Um, and so what ends up happening is you end up with a lot of interesting decisions about how to manage the black boat and how to swing between the corners. Because as you'll notice, there's no port on this map. Mm, yeah, and so uh, unless you're playing as Jess, yeah, your black boat's gonna run out of fuel. And so um, you get that fast infantry reinforcement early on, but then if you don't re uh, if you don't refuel that black boat, then that fast infantry reinforcement goes away. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the, the sea tiles kind of get in the way of your infantry going down uh, if you don't have the black boat. So yeah. there's uh, some, interesting uh decision making that you can make around that um and then also the the comm towers and the corners are very very contested so there's a lot of lots of fight over and it's not one of those maps that tends to 
uh, really stall out. Um, it tends to be a map where there's a lot of active fighting over the comm towers and active fighting over those corners and you have properties flipping and um, can tend to be can tend to be very brawly okay. um, but at the same time uh, that's I think uh, kind of segueing into the the CO picks a little bit about uh, yeah so I have where a, we, a question where we go from there two first before we get to the CO matchup well segueing sure. so for our 700 level players the first question they're going to ask is Oh, there's like quick reinforcements in the infantry. Should I build mechs on this map that there is a black boat to transport them? Did you build mechs in this matchup? Do you recommend it? What are your thoughts on it? Um, yeah, so I'm going to maybe pause that question for a little bit later. Um, okay. But I would say in general, uh, mechs have a, a place on this map, um, but you do not want to mech spam. Mm, so of course. I would not have more than one or two mechs uh, at any given point but i do think that um there is a, a mountain kind of in the center of the map um on each side that is a really good place to get a mech okay. um because there's a lot of vision um it, it, right in the center uh, next to the, the forest uh oh this one right here yeah right there, yeah that, gotcha. that one that is a, a beautiful place for a mech um because it can def it can uh punish any vehicles on the comm tower mm -hmm. obviously you don't want to send vehicles into a mech on a mountain that's not very fun of course um so that's a really good place to put mechs um and uh mechs can work really well with t-copters and mm. um double airport yeah. I've, I've used mechs before on this map um but sparingly because there's very fast vehicle reinforcements so primarily you're still going to be wanting to build vehicles and air mm. uh, it's a good option but there's just a lot of good options on this map in addition to mechs. Okay, another question, segueing into the CO matchup. You said it's a very brawly matchup. Why did you choose Olaf instead of Max in this situation? Um, so I've never thought about really picking uh, Max just because I don't like Max. Uh, Max needs to Shots win yeah. in order to win. Uh -huh. It's just not my play style. Um, okay. My play style, I really like um, forcing the opponent to have to um, to win in order mm -hmm. to win, if that makes I sense. Feel, I feel that, um, that's what I like doing too. Yeah, and I just like artillery too much. If you're Hawk, if you're Drake, the opponent has to come to you if they're Kindle or Von Bolt. I kind of appreciate that. Um, a lot of people can't take advantage of that. So, okay, I understand. Yeah, so I, I picked Olaf and actually, um, I had been thinking that maybe this could be an Eagle map as well, but mm -hmm. um, I thought that maybe there's too many planes and that um, the the snow would basically cause enough reinforce issues that it could oh, tip, yeah. uh, to be um, an Olaf map. And I've picked Olaf on this map before. I think I had an Olaf mirror against Tordred. I had this an map. Olaf game on so, this map as well. Yeah, Olaf mirrors are quite yeah. common. So I think Olaf and Eagle are pretty viable on this map. I think you can kind of play either one. Um, and to me, it was just a kind of a safe pick because uh, yeah. it's a comfort pick, but I, I love Eagle and um, I think when I saw Rip pick Eagle, I was very concerned that I had been outpicked <laughs> because I, if, if, if I'm playing Olaf versus Eagle, I prefer to be the Eagle. It just suits my, really? um, okay. my play style more. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, sure. you can proliferate easier. They have to come to get you. Uh, for context, Rip always picks Eagle. Like, I've had matchups where I think Olaf is better. He still picks Eagle. So I, I agree with you. I think Olaf is the best on this map. I think he's the safe pick. But I think Rip just, he's just, he likes flexing. He likes doing interesting games. And I kind of respect them for that. He doesn't like the easy Olaf cop out that I, I like doing most of the time. Uh, so he, he dared to pick Eagle. So I respect him for that. But it's all, he has viability for sure, though. Uh, I would pick him over Max for sure on this map. Um, but that, that kind of uh, makes sense, though. But uh, okay. And then, yeah, I think that, that covers all those. So you, let's start the game now. Um, so we have to set the one bottom. more thing about the COs, oh, real sure. quick. Sorry. Please. Um, there is something different about Eagle once you reach about 1600. Okay. Um, Olaf is easier to play um, at a high level because the CO power dynamic is very simple to to manage. Yeah. Um, but once you get really, really good with uh, Eagle, he starts to scale much better um, than you would expect. So like mm. a 1600 Eagle versus a 1400 Eagle are just like two totally separate categories. True. And you're gonna see that in this game um, 
1600 eagles punish your mistakes like nobody's business and can expose any small mistake you make and punish you massively <laughs> yeah he's done that with me before he he picked off my i had an olafer's eagle into him and it, it wasn't pretty i think the kill to death ratio was like seven to zero and i was like why am i still playing this game uh so yeah. I, I understand uh, but yeah, props to uh, Rip. He's a strong player, as we'll, we'll soon see. And as you guys who are watching probably already know if you do play Advanced Wars. So anyway, without further ado, so we got Rip at the bottom in the Eagies. And you're at the top. So I'm just going to go through these first turns. They're pretty obvious. You're going to go for the bases first. You went for the back airport over here instead of the front over here. So this is where we have our first uh, divergence. Rip went for the, the chain over here, and you went for the back airport. Can you explain your thought process behind that? So this is actually really important. So um, this is my own, I guess, uh, unique uh, Elega to a build on this map. I designed mm. this build myself. Okay. Um, and the idea behind this build is um, in the top left corner, we have that city, the very top left corner. And whatever infantry captures that city is just kind of stuck in the boonies forever. It's yeah. got nowhere to go very quickly. And so the whole point of this build is we want to get the airport as soon as possible so that we can get a T-copter as soon as possible. And then whenever the infantry is done capping that city in the top left, we're going to have a T-copter ready to shuttle him out. And he's going to kind of mm. launch out of that corridor where otherwise he'd be stuck doing nothing, um, blocking my own airport if he's going to go to the right side. or stuck behind a ton of mountains if he's going to go down. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's really the whole concept behind that build. And when I worked it out, actually the income curve works beautifully really? it actually works both as player one and as player two on this okay. map um so you can do this exact concept with both um with both sides but oh uh, the, the viewers are gonna the viewers are gonna go nuts yeah. with this build <laughs> yes and i've i mean i won a game against tortured on this map simply because my opener is better uh -huh. um because of the t-copter so it like, can launch you unfortunately, forward unfortunately yeah yeah, it's the tempo you get from a T-copter on this map is completely insane. And I keep thinking that everybody's going to start copying it. Now they probably will. Mm. Um, and I probably need to be a little more uh, robust in the future. But uh, this is this is an insane build on this map. It's so good and you're going to see why. All right, makes sense. Yeah, for context, my past games, like Capture the City, the next one just gets the comm tower. Like, I didn't know what to do with it. And then from there, God knows, it probably ends up in this black boat on the weak side. So, yeah, let's see how that works out. And then you go for this down over there pretty standard stuff um nothing out of the ordinary you go for the airport over there rather than the city i mean this seems like not much of a you know opportunity cost kind of pick it seems pretty straightforward uh no recon uh you could have built a recon there if you so chose but instead you said you're going for the t-copter build and i don't believe either of you builds a recon this seems more like a tank map with all these forests and planes as you said so uh that's my take at least when i played it i don't think i bought a recon till later on in the game like a late recon for just for vision uh, because you're kind of confined to this mountain and these mountain areas for vision in the middle you can't see shit without a recon so uh i i went for a tank first or maybe even artillery build first i think this is much more of a artillery tank sort of map would you agree with that yeah, I would. And um, you're exactly right about the mountains. So on your weak side, you really don't need recons uh, very yeah. much because the, there's so many mountains and those mountains are on your side of the map that you can get away with uh, without a recon. Uh, eventually, yeah. you're going to want a recon on your strong side because sure. you don't really have any mountains over there, um, especially if you're going to be attacking around the comp tower. But um, it's less important to get early than it would be on other maps. I agree. Uh, good thing we're in agreement. That means I'm doing something right in fog. <laughs> All right, so we have the early T copter. I believe Rip here can afford a tank or a copter. I uh, know he'd have to basically get for a copter. He's probably gonna build a tank here. New builds an artillery. So like I was saying earlier, but he builds it from the farthest away base, and he seems to be angling it towards his weak side. Interestingly enough, I think it's because of the opportunity cost. He's not on the call, so we can't ask him. But I think it's because he doesn't want to have these infantry. If he put one here, his infantry would be forced to go up north here. I think he wants to keep shuttling infantry over there. Um, so that, that's my take on it. But he builds an artillery for it. A bit interesting. I think I actually did the same thing. Uh, hopefully he didn't cop copy my game because I did not play. <laughs> well, I, I highly doubt he did. But all right, so let's see what well, you do with I that think the idea. I think the idea here is um, there may be actually some metagaming going on. Um, mm. Rip, I I know Rip watched some of my old replays on ah. this map. And so um, in all of my previous games, I've gone really hard to the strong side. 
Hmm. And so I think Rip is planning on trying to lock down the comm tower oh. with uh, a bunch of artillery. On and your strong side. So the side. whole build is, yeah, on my strong side. And so that's why the artillery is coming from that base. Yeah, hmm. so it's, it's a very interesting build, but I think it's, it's maybe tailored because I've played this map three times before this, and he's probably seen all those replays and yeah. tried to exploit uh, some patterns. He does his research. Yeah, I, the thing is, there's no forest in range to get the lock. The artillery has to be exposed to lock that comm tower, which is a bit dubious, in my opinion. But it, the idea, I guess, you put in the forest, you also have an infantry there that can interrupt, and then the infantry that attacks is protected. Um, we'll see how it plays out yeah exactly we'll see no spoilers we'll see where that t-copter goes because it goes in the middle actually gets a little boost doesn't really provide any help for this oh well, it gets the infantry to the front line but it cannot reach that city unfortunately uh, this is what actually this one can so it's not even a big deal but i'm assuming you're going to use this one right off the base to capture there this one actually can move to the bottom i'm just i haven't seen this game in a while so i'm just saying my first yep. thoughts uh, artillery and you have it on your strong side. I'm more adherent to that as you guys have seen in my videos before. I'm more of a proponent for artillery on the strong side because you're gonna have infantry advantage. You're gonna have easier ways to block using infantry walls, your your artillery. Um, so let's see where those infantry start capping. Rip this pretty standard stuff. He moves his artillery north as you just mentioned. He builds a mech. So mechs, viable. You know, one, two, three turns it can reach the black boat in that square. That's not terrible. Um, might be going for a car or a T copter to transport rather than by foot and black boat. Personally, it's pretty early too. This isn't a really mech. Um, what, what, I, I I don't think it's a huge opportunity cost. To be perfectly honest, I don't think he lost that much momentum if he didn't build one. He'd have two K instead of zero, and that doesn't really add up to anything a special build next turn. So, do you have any thoughts on that mech? Do you think it's insignificant in the long term or? I mean, I hate it. Uh, I think <laughs> mechs are great, but you want to pair mechs with T-copters and not yeah. run it out to the black boat. Um, I just think in general, uh, if you're trying to kind of flip the strong side, weak side, it's difficult. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I'm guessing that he's trying to like, you know, do a specialized build, but in general, I wouldn't recommend this. I think it's just better to keep your strong side as your strong side because you're putting yourself at a disadvantage with the reinforcements. Mm, okay. um, and so you're kind of setting yourself up to fight uphill, um, even if uh, things work out well. Mm, that makes sense. Okay, so Rip's just being a little bold here. And let's see what those infantry do. Yep, goes to the center as I thought. Okay, so you, you're positioning it to either get this city over there or this comm tower. You could have actually. No, you could not quite have gotten that. That would have been nice. You could have gotten one square away from that. So I can see why you went for the that city over there slash the comp tower. You went in the forest, you're very secretive about it. I guess you're anticipating a possible recon. Um, so this is actually a really critical, like this is probably the critical move and it seems really insignificant. So I want to kind of pause a second and talk about this. Sure. Um, because you're right. This T-copter getting the infantry there is really, really important. So. Um, I've done something very similar to this uh, in, in all my games, but I there's different options. And this is one of the reasons why I like this opener so much. Um, there's a ton of flexibility that you can do things slightly differently okay. um, to still keep it um, unpredictable. So there's really two options with the teacup of this turn. Mm -hmm. One is we're gonna move the infantry into that forest there. And that lets me see the city to make sure that there's not like a recon park there. Yeah. Um, but actually, and in the past, I had just uh, moved that uh, infantry from the forest onto the city and cap it. But mm -hmm. what I realized after my last game on this map is that actually I could just go straight for the comm tower. Yeah. And, um, and I realized that my own build was vulnerable to kind of an early comm tower cheese. So I'm already kind of feeling the pressure from the, the CO pick in this matchup. Yeah. Um, and I don't really love having to be the aggressor. So I'm like, okay, this is a really great opportunity to try and go for something really cheeky because um, if you don't have vision of that comm tower, you don't send like a recon up uh, to that side, um, yeah. you can get that comm tower and and the the I, I kind of checked out the infantry timings. You don't get the infantry on the mountains in time to uh to interrupt it um you can get vision of it in time but you can't actually get there this, this mountain um, right here i'm now, assuming 
Yeah, that one, yeah. and also the uh, the the ones to the top right of that can okay. also see it. Okay. Um, but they but they both get there at the same time. Um, but there's one other alternative that I could do that is what makes this build so cool. Um, instead of putting that infantry in the trees for, from the T-copter, yeah. um, I can actually put it one square back. Um, and that means that I don't have vision of the city, but what that does mean is that the T-copter is one square back as uh, well. Yeah, and that means the next good. turn, uh, yeah, for that, not really for that boost, actually. It's to get the T-copter back to the bases one square closer, uh, because that way I can make a mech out of the middle base. Oh, uh, gotcha. And instantly slingshot it over to the woods that's directly to the right. So six squares. Yes, yeah, so you can get a mech there in two turns, uh. which is very, it's, it's really strong, and it's a very surprising way to kind of counter early recon harass, because all of a sudden, instead of having you know, two anti-tank vehicles, like your artillery and your tank. Now you have like an artillery, a tank, and a mech that are very far advanced, that can be very surprising and can help you win the numbers battle. Um, so that's another option that you can do. And I've done that in the past and it's worked out very well. Okay. But you have to set up for it. Um, yeah. So if, right now where my T-copter is positioned, I can't get close enough to really do the mech thing. So I'm kind of committing yeah. to doing infantry. Get another infantry. But, I, have, I have a couple questions. Yeah, uh, sure. First off, just a note. Most times people have the game plan, they don't really have these branches off like you do, which I appreciate that you have, okay, as a backup, I could do this mech build, and I could also propel it forward towards the comm tower build as well. It's kind of like you have forks that's more adaptable. I'm more rigid in my technique. If something doesn't work out, I'm kind of like scrambling for ideas. So I kind of like how there's different ways you can adapt to the situation, or even just have the same sort of build, but maybe you anticipate where your player, maybe he's Eagle, he plays different. Maybe he's Max, he plays different. You have these sorts of things where you still have that T-Copter base, but you can build off that to adapt. I, I appreciate that. The number thing I always talk about, or most of the time talk about, don't go for the comm towers early. Go for income early because you're not going to have early fights. Can you say why you go early for this comm tower rather than, say, the city, this infantry over here caps this city and then goes down for the comm tower later in a flawless chain? Why would you say here you'd go for the early comm tower? Well, speed kills, number one. Okay. So um, the it, it's really map dependent, uh, um, but on this map, the comm towers are literally the most contested thing in the entire map. Mm. So... They're very hard to get, but once you get them, they're very hard to lose. Gotcha. So getting them really, really early uh, often means that you're going to have it for the rest of the game. Additionally, um, you have to look at the opportunity cost. So yeah. um, the worst thing that could happen is I lose this infantry and then the city that I would have captured gets delayed. But that yeah. city is... In the medium run, it's still my city, and it's not really contestable. It's not, yeah. Um, I usually think of yeah, this comp so, tower, and this one nestled between the t mountains is the most like contested, and then the corner-ish area, like well, these. The, 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 mountain city, the mountain city is unlosable. Whoever gets that mountain city first can never lose it. It's actually the, the top two uh, cities, um, the one above the mountain city, and then the very top right one. Those two cities ah. are the, the two that flip. Okay. So actually, it's the the top right one and the one to the left of that. Okay, these two. Yeah, those. Usually, this those becomes two are the blue ones. control, from my experience. Blue gets this. Green might be able to get yes. that early, but this one, I remember in the game, we flipped this one over here. It was or it was always contested. Okay. I think they were white the entirety of the game. These two these two cities over here. Comp towers, I believe, both of them. We were both playing very gentlemanly, uh, but I can see mm -hmm. how speed kills and this sort of matchup with Rip, who understands the map understands the matchup, because it's crucial. If you're Eagle, you need the comm tower, more so than Max, more so than Olaf, I would argue, because for those KOs, when you use your Eagle superpower, you need to be able to break through uh, the first wall, uh, wall of infantry. So I think it's critical, personally. And also, you know, two comm towers, two hit KOs, tanks on cities with two tanks, etc. with infantry, so I understand that. Okay, so that makes sense. This is most one of the most contested properties on the map, so that's why you go for it. Makes sense. Um, it's risky though. Um, I'm looking for an edge here because okay. I don't want to fight a fair fight. Okay. Um, and to me, this is a very low risk way to get a pretty big edge. Um, mm. If this infantry gets popped by a recon next turn, yeah. um, it's the game's not over. Um, but if I get it, then I'm fighting two comp towers to one against Eagle probably for the rest of the game. Okay, yeah, that'd, that'd be great. 20% firepower versus 10% firepower is quite significant, especially with those guaranteed two hit KOs. 
Um, so it makes sense. But uh, let's let's go to Eagle's turn next. He does his Black Boat shenanigans. This one actually at the bottom isn't range or anything. He might go in this mountain. That's what I think I did. Uh, you can also go for this safer property, but I like going this mountain, maybe getting that little nestled one. As you said, it's hard to flip later on because you can attack from infantry from the mountains. Uh, or we even put an artillery or mech or god knows what over there. So getting those are paramount. Uh, so he gets his first infantry wave over there. Artillery gets position. No, okay, finally see the first recon. We've seen our other artillery on the strong side this time. So very interesting by Rip. I guess he wanted to dabble a little bit. He wanted to have some sort of defense for his infantry capping over there uh and investing a recon just for vision purposes because like you said you don't need a recon on your strong side uh or your weak side over here because you have this mountain you have these several other mountains so this is definitely going on to the the strong side um but it's a little curious two early artilleries it's day seven in a mech this is very unorthodox build by riff but he's an unorthodox guy so he can probably make it work uh but, I guess it makes sense because he spent all his money. Maybe if it wasn't, he'd probably build a tank here and a uh, recon over here. It's probably my guess. Um, that's my thoughts. This least. whole build, this whole build is designed around preventing me from getting the the strong side comm tower. Mm -hmm. And so he's he's trying to hit a timing at about day nine or ten when I want to get the comm tower, and he's going to have a artillery and a tank and a mech and a recon over there with vision of the whole thing and basically um just play defense deny me the comm tower forever and you think then, this recon's uh, gonna go to the strong side over here or his weak side uh, i'm not sure how he planned it originally um uh -huh. but his choice is gonna get made for him in a second okay fair enough Fair enough. I have, like I said, I haven't watched this game in a while. I'm just going. I kind of prefer going in a little more blind. I like doing that for my replays, just yep. so I can, you know, get myself yep. in the shoes of the the player. Um, so now you have your black boat, first wave. You capture the comp towers we talked about. You bring your artillery over here to defend this infantry. Um, why did you move it over here? I, this is kind of where I disagree with you a bit. This is a safe property, in my opinion. I don't know why you'd need the art. I guess it was just to conceal it from your opponent, just for vision in case he has a recon. Because uh, I'm more of a proponent personally, getting a little more centralized, maybe. Uh, you can't go into this forest over here, unfortunately, but right. why, why did you move your so, artillery there? Uh, the simple answer is because there's nowhere else that I can put it that's better. Okay. Um, so if I go the safe build, that artillery actually covers the city that I would normally be capping uh, yeah. instead of the comm tower. Exactly. But I can't reach it. Um, so now that artillery is kind of useless, so I'm just kind of putting it somewhere that I don't think it's going to get hit. And okay. in the extremely unlikely world that there's a recon like in the corner, mm -hmm. then maybe I'll get some value. But um, I mean, nowhere else can I put that artillery to like get any value. Because anything hitting the comm tower is not going to be hitting it from above. Yeah. So um, I just want to make sure it doesn't get hit, basically. Okay, fair enough. And it seems like your idea is maybe to put it here next turn on this road or to defend if, in case there is an attack. Uh, although this tank does not quite reach the comp tower, unfortunately. So you, this is a bit of a gamble on your part. Uh, you have it nothing absolutely to defend. absolutely is a gamble. Uh, You're but right. I mean, it, it's, it's not safe. It's, it's not safe, but then again, who builds a, a recon on their weak side? to attack comp tower. This is very unorthodox. Usually expected over here where it makes more sense. A recon, like I said, like we said, mountains at the top don't really need a recon this early. So it's not safe, but it's like, what kind of like players are going to do that? There maybe 1800 exactly. or 800 players. Like Rip is not going to do that typically. Although he's doing a weird build, but even that for him is a bit odd. So anyway, like I said, he moves his infantry over here, kind of like what I would do. Gets the vision as well. Sees the comp tower now, and he's like, damn, I'm one <laughs> space away. So he was probably pissed at this yeah. point. He did all this investment, yeah. and now he has to think on the fly. Like, okay, so my whole game plan was basically ruined there. Now will he move the recon over this way? Now will he front shift his tank over there? Because, like I said, you have to adapt. In higher level games, you can't just scramble like, uh. Hopefully, he had this little own little tree where he's like, okay, if that doesn't work out, I have this plan. Uh, so let's see what he does over here. Seems like he is committing. Okay, so he does bring the recon over there. Brings the tank as well. Very bold artillery right here. On his weak side, I guess anticipating that you don't have a recon um, on your strong side, that's very risky. Because uh, if he hits hit that, his tank won't one-shot from the plane. So 
I, I don't agree with that move. I'm sure you don't agree as well. What, what are your thoughts on it? I think it's fine. Um, really? Because it's it's so early that um, there's no real way for me to have vehicles uh, this far forward. And even if I do have a recon and I hit the artillery, the tank is just there to kill my recon because the recons o would be overextended attacking the artillery. So um, if we start brawling, on that kind of diagonal where the artillery is, it's actually very good for rips. That's so, true. It's two. It's two um, reinforcement turns from this base right here. For that's tank. right. So two it's turns, temporarily safe. Turns. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes so, sense. But it, if you did have a so tank, though, you could get a tank first strike. But you'd have to have vision, which is another ask. So I understand. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's it's and a bit. I don't want to be fighting there. Yeah. I don't want to be fighting there. You want to be fighting? Where, where, there, I guess right over here ish is where it's three turns each player this is like the medium yeah exactly. once you start touch the square over here it's one two three four five six one two three four five six so anything beyond these you're fighting in equal yes. territory over there and plus your other base is closer so it's an advantage for you because this other one over here one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five. okay so it's not great yep. reinforcement over here but anyway so I understand. Yeah. Makes sense. He brings his mech up, brings his artillery also up. He's going all out over here. This is uh, this is interesting. I mean, it tracks. He's eagle. You want to have a death ball. You don't want to be splitting up your forces too much. So when you do have that lightning strike, you can have attack after attack after attack rather than isolated fights. So makes sense. Builds another recon. This one is going to go to the weak side, I'm sure, for vision purposes. He's kind of... I don't know. He's, he has nothing over here, but you have nothing over here to really punish as well. Um, mm -hmm. so I guess that, that's going to be a handshake comp tower, it seems. Although, let's see, if you finish capping this, next turn you can actually stop this comp tower with this infantry over there, so that might actually be in play. And actually you can view already, so you have one corrupter right. right now, so I'm assuming, from what we talked about, you're going to take advantage of that. Um, exactly, and, uh, I don't want to fight fair, and getting that infantry to see the comp tower, actually, I did the vision before I finished capping the city. If he was capping the comm tower in response, I would have pulled the infantry off of that city to interrupt the comm tower. Very smart. Okay, yeah, because you have a chain here anyway. Yeah. It's not that huge of an opportunity cost. Exactly. So I, I don't want to fight two comm towers against two comm towers. I want to be a, a cheeky little Lagatua <laughs> and uh, and have an unfair fight. So uh, I'm going to make sure that I get that comm tower and he doesn't. All right, that makes sense. Smart move. I didn't even notice to pick up. That's why we have guest speakers, everyone get the little minute details that you, is often overlooked. So you build another artillery over here. I'm assuming that's going your strong side as well. Uh, tank, you could have built two tanks here. Why did you build another artillery? Especially facing- a great question. Facing Eagle as well. You don't want it to really stall out. You want to be the aggressor as Olaf. So I'm just curious why you didn't build two tanks here. Maybe you don't remember. So, I mean, it's like a- <laughs> No, no, I do, I do remember now. It just, okay. it just came back to me. So look at my vision. Yeah. I see nothing, okay? So I have no idea where anything is. So we have the, the hindsight, we can see where all of Rip's stuff is, but I see nothing. Of course. So naturally, when you see nothing, you would assume that he is sending all of his stuff to the strong side, uh -huh. right? So I, I'm in my mind, I'm imagining all those vehicles are just behind my vision on, on the strong side, and he's getting ready to take that comm tower. Gotcha. And so I'm preparing to have an artillery on the weak side to help me um, keep my infantry close enough mm. so that I can keep that comm tower from falling into his hands. Now, obviously, okay. I'm going to find out that the reality is very different in about a second, but that's mm. what I'm thinking. Gotcha. Unfortunately, this doesn't reach locking the comm tower in two turns. It takes three turns to set up uh, or even defend the infantry. So that part's a little tricky, but I understand your thought process there. Um, lock down both comm towers. Because if you do all this effort over here and he just gets this one over here, then, like, you know, it was yeah, all moot exactly. point. So it makes sense. Yep. He actually does not go for the comp tower, too. Interestingly enough, he watched uh, too many of my videos, maybe. But also, this is nuts here. He, this part, I'm like, what are you doing, Rip? Why not move your recon first? Yep. Like, You're he is a 1600 right. level player. This is where I was like, really, dude? Like, I don't even do that. Like, as a measly 1500 level player, like, why, 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 why'd you do that? that? That didn't make sense to me. I guess he was very... Mad. Mad. I, I can't really <laughs> it's justify a tilt play. that. It's a tilt play. It's, it's just a tilt play. How dare you How dare yeah. you sneak that comp tower? That's so that's not a great sure. start for Rip right there. I, 
Yeah, the recon too. Like, why didn't you move it first? He does have the mech over there defending their artillery, which is not seen by you. You have no vision. You have no recon over here. So he has the vision advantage over you over here. He sees all your units. You can't see him. Um, but you're going to get a free tank kill, essentially. Or a free, free tank hit. You can't finish it off, unfortunately, because there is that artillery over there. Um, but you might actually fight into it accidentally, getting a little too cocky. Maybe that he was, he was counting on that as well. Like, oh, it's a free tank! And then you go all in. Shot fired here. Your tank caps as well. Um, but I think you're a little more disciplined than that, just from our, our talking so far. Um, nice, nice little cap in the corner. And uh, uh, yeah, so sorry, go on. Yeah, so this is. Um, I, I want to kind of highlight something about the map right now. Um, I, I want to. First of all, the T copter build allows me to get caps on both of those corner cities earlier yeah. than you would normally. You can see that uh, Rip has only one of those cities in the bottom left corner, and I'm going to be able to cap both of them in the top right corner. So that's yeah. that's a further benefit of the T copter. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is look at the infantry on the weak side versus Rip's infantry on the weak side. Ah. Just look. Or sorry, sorry, Rip's infantry on the strong side, rather. Um, my, mine on the weak side versus his on the strong side. Yeah. So just look at the amount of infantry I have compared to him. And that is because I am using the T-copter to shift infantry down to the uh, to my weak side now because um, I expect there to be fighting there. Uh -huh. uh, and so I want to have a lot of infantry to deny that comm tower. Now that I've got two comm towers, I can deny properties very easily with my yeah, infantry. Yeah, right um, there. But also, yeah. Um, but also, as this map moves into the later phases, um, you get very infantry starved on your strong side because, as we mentioned at the beginning of the game, your vehicle reinforcement to the strong side is very fast. And so generally, you want the bases close to your strong side to be building vehicles every turn. And so if those are building vehicles every turn, then your infantry are kind of going towards the weak side, or it's very slow. Um, so I want to try to exploit that and really win the infantry fight down there very hard if I can. Yeah. Um, and then that will simplify things a lot later on. Yeah, you read my mind because later on it's going to be really hard to cap properties, not only because of the infantry starved Olaf Winter Fury. If you can deny yeah. properties for the first 10, 12 turns, it is incredibly hard to flip those properties. Number one, because of the yeah. nature of this map and the uh, the reinforcement mechanics, but also Winter Fury. Oh my God! When I did that Olaf mirror, things didn't flip ever. However, they were yeah. they stayed. It was basically just brawling. Who won the brawl? In income never flipped. So um, I understand that point. So yeah, you can use these infantry. They're late. Maybe you can stop that cap over there. Possibly. Uh, you see this infantry over there. You can definitely easily stop that. Um, but so right here, you're getting some interest infantry fights, automatic two hit KO, as you discussed, um, you're in position to cap the comp tower yourself. If you so choose, um, build your first copter over there. Uh, was it just happenstance that you had the right amount of funds to build this copter or was it more of a big thought process behind building it at, at turn nine? Um, I think with the, the two comp towers, uh, Copters can be nice because it's going to punish uh, overextensions into me very heavily. So if uh, if Rip wants to try and take that comm tower on his weak side, uh, he's going to have to control territory in front of the comm tower mm -hmm. in order to prevent infantry from just coming in and, and popping whatever's on the comm tower. Yeah. Um, and copters are really, really efficient if they can kind of stay one or two squares behind the, the main line of engagement. Yeah. Um, additionally, Rip is eagle, uh, and so I want to get anti-air, and uh, air is also anti-air. Yeah. So it's kind of covering both sides of that. Yeah, and as I like to say, build anti-air from day to 8 to 10 generally. You're doing it with smack in the middle, day 9. I love it. Also, look at this. I am incapable. This is why I'm 5, 1500, not 600. Look at this discipline right there. You don't attack into that tank. You don't even try to get vision of what's going on there. You literally just, you're happy as a clam. Don't fall for the trap. You don't get hit by this artillery, you don't get hit by this artillery. You don't have any vision. It's not like you see it and you back off. You just know there's a trap and wait or something of the sort. You haven't even seen this artillery. You haven't seen either of them. You have no idea what he has on this map. Well, so I know I, one is there because one popped the infantry on the comm tower. So I do know that there's an artillery there. Oh, you do? Okay, sorry. So maybe you aren't. 
as much of a psychic as I originally. Okay. Well, I don't, so you do I don't see the second artillery though. That's yeah, I, I don't see the second artillery. That's a big surprise. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Not as psychic as I thought, but that's still a good discipline right there. Just knowing from the past turn, you watch the replay player, you know what's going on. Not falling for it. Get a free uh, 8 HP on the tank. Approximately uh, 5,600 um, in damage right there for free, basically. And you lost an infantry for it. So I like that. Feel us over here winning the infantry fight on the weak side as well. Impressive. So let's see what Rip does here. He gets vision, but he can't stop these two unless he stops his own, which he can't do. Um, he's also late to get the Speed center kills. as well. He, he's much later than you to get the center as you use the the comp tower or the copter over there to the T copter. So, um, but he's Speed using kills. his artillery. What's up? Speed kills. Okay, that's that's the, for that's all these the, all these captures. That's yeah. what the uh, Speed kills. The, the moral of the story is, folks. Speed kills, and then you got the scary double artillery, so you can't even tech up into that. Uh, can't build a medium tank, can't build a Nia tank. Those are going to get popped by those two artillery, and you can't really reveal. And then if you... T this is a perfect little ball over here. You have the vision. You have the mech backup defending. You have two artillery. That's scary. You can't... Basically, you can't go into that. This is like a wall. Um, yeah. Personally, if it's I good, see good that, yeah. I'd probably front shift. Uh, but you don't see the whole thing. You only have the tanks. You don't have a recon on your strong side. I actually built a recon pretty late. Uh, personally, I probably would have built a little bit earlier. I don't know what they, you'd have to stop doing. Maybe you delay this copter right here and get a recon, or two recons, one on the strong side. No, or just one recon, actually. Uh, maybe. I don't know. That's just my thought process. Uh, I'd be dying a vision over here, man. I just, I need to know what's going on, personally. Uh, and you're, you're just happy as a clam over here with these tanks with their three vision. Uh, just holding back, but... It was a surprise me a little. You got Com tower. a later. Uh, I got the com tower. It's not my problem. I don't need to attack into that. Like fair enough. Yeah. Uh, it would be quite quite a dilemma if I didn't have the com tower already. Um, but since I do, like, it you can sit there for as long as he wants. It doesn't bother me. Even if he has the eagle superpower, you're you're happy with that. Just uh. Well, if he's got uh, well day day sixteen or day seventeen we can uh, we reevaluate, but for right now, like, okay, fair you can have a really strong defensive position. But uh, I've already got what I wanted, so um, there's no need for me to attack into it. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, we take it day by day. We don't always. There's nothing holds firm the entirety of a game. Oh, I need to build a medium tank now. It doesn't always hold. Oh, three tanks, medium tank. Like like I said, uh, things matter. Uh, situation matters. Uh, what was the term that I used? Uh, you need to have some sort of, I don't know, it's in my, one of my videos, you gotta watch that. <laughs> but you attack over <laughs> here, um, and interrupt, you see another infantry over there, that's a bit scary, you're probably gonna lose that, uh, infantry. But, in the grand scheme of things, I think it makes sense because you're gonna have this Darth of infantry in the corner. Uh, so you wanna prevent that cap, get the income advantage. Um, and I'm assuming that's your thought process over here, you're gonna bring this down south, try to, at all costs, to kill off that infantry. Um, I'm assuming that's- Do you, uh, skip ahead, skip ahead a few moves. Okay. Moves? Okay. No, no, sorry, so just just, just uh, moves on this, on this turn. Okay. Okay, three little kills over there. A little more defensive. Okay. It's ah! At the end. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Very aggressive. Oh, you're... Okay, so I honestly would have captured here, uh, but you're a little more disciplined, like I said, because, like, you have so many captures, deal with it. How are you going to deal with all of these at the same time? Overwhelm your opponent. Yep. Paralysis analysis. But I guess you wanted this just as a... I don't know. I mean, it would have been interrupted anyway with this infantry slash recon. Um, but this is safe as, as, as hell. Um, so, okay. Very aggressive. So you felt strong enough to capture this property? It's the benefit of having two comm towers. Um, all the infantry fighting is going to be strongly in my favor. Mm. Um and additionally, I know that if I can, if I don't put pressure on that city, then you're absolutely right. That seven HP infantry is going to get uh, slapped down, and then he's going to take that bottom left uh, city. Yeah. Um, but by adding that additional pressure, now he's just got too many things that he needs to attack. And I know that if we keep fighting in that corner, eventually my weak side infantry reinforce is going to win the day. So any opportunity I have to trade infantry is going to be really good. Um, additionally, uh, last turn, I interrupted the cap on that city there that is still uh, neutral. Uh, this last turn is the uh, the one to the right of the comm tower. Yeah, yeah that one. And then 
Uh, nothing came and hit me. So okay. there was no recon waiting to counterattack my infantry. And you can be sure that if there was an, a recon in range, he would have moved a recon onto the city to uh, counterattack and take a free infantry. Of course. So I'm kind of wondering, like, maybe literally everything is on the weak side and um, I can really uh, abuse the situation and get a free comm tower. But even if not, um, infantry trading is great. So why didn't you capture this city just personally? Because I'm anticipating that he's not going to let me get the comm tower, and I want the infantry to counterattack what I expect to be uh, infantry coming from that woods there. Yeah, this um, area over here. Yeah. Yeah, and and that city, it's it's a safe city for Eagle. Yeah. So I just don't want to get too cheeky. My goal here is not necessarily just to cap all the cities right away. It's just to win the infantry fight. Yeah, it's two turns reinforced to reach that city. Makes sense. You don't want to get too cocky. All right, so yep. you're starting to show the income lead. You have a 1k advantage. It's going to grow larger. Well, he's going to capture the middle property, so it'll be even temporarily. He brings his recon in, two hit KO. Artillery as well. You have no vision. You have no recon on your weak side. Uh, but you do have these mountains, so you actually can't quite... Oh, Rip is smart here. Doesn't quite move it into vision over there. Just enough to cover all these things, but not in mountain vision. So smart play by Rip. He evacuates his infantry, he evacuates both of his artillery, are now very defensive. So he basically gave up his whole game plan. Now he's at, okay, I'm Eagle, I need to win by proliferation of my army. It seems to be his new MO, rather than deny the comm tower. His backup plan, okay, I need to get 50 units, and then I need that strongest lightning strike anyone's ever seen. Is basically what I've taken from this. But everything's perfectly covered. Look at all this beautiful artillery coverage, the mech coverage, it's just like... Nothing can be attacked, except for this black boat for a tank. But no one would ever do that in their right mind. Um, builds his first copter a little bit later. Day 11. Okay. You have an earlier comp tower, or a copter. Attacks two infantry over there. What else can you do, really? Um, so, here... Knowing you, attack 6 HP to 4, 3 kills off. This one kills that. You cap over here. Is that correct? What you would do? you go for the kills? I'm definitely... You're not Bottom, going for the kills, uh, okay. What I would have done, personally, just from my own experience, six attacks four, three finishes it off, this one goes down and kills the six. And then you put this in the fours and you can double cap next turn. But maybe you wanted the income this turn? Um, but let's see what I'm doing here. Um, yeah. There's, there's more fighting that's going to happen. Okay. So you do, ah, yes, yes, that's why. You wanted to save that infantry, not for the bottom over here, but rather to kill that off. You see... You don't see the artillery yet. You go for the cap. That's fine. Yep. Right in the recon's face. The recon can reach you though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, one, you cannot quite reach you. You can't, the, unfortunately the replay viewer, you can't see shit accurately. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it can't reach. Uh, it's perfectly one space away from being able to be reached there. So it takes nine move, not eight move. So nice move over there. Um, bring your copters to the south. You're, now you're centralizing. I think you saw him turtle up over here. And there's not much opportunity cost to be fighting into that. Like we said earlier, it's within two base reinforcement turns. Uh, so it makes sense. And so now you're front shifting a bit to the center, which makes sense. You keep your tank in the corner over there, interestingly enough. Um, why, why'd you move this up here rather than, say, with the other tanks? So it's a little bit about tempo. So Quota Iota often ends up being about who can control the corners the fastest yeah um and additionally we have full vision here but actually my vision of where rip's vehicles are is very limited like yeah. i don't know any like even that second artillery like i've never seen that so i have no idea yeah, where rip's is... army is and one of the it, if you're rip in this situation you can't realistically take my comm tower on the <laughs> on my strong side yeah so in my mind, the thing that Rip is thinking about is, okay, I'm going to shift everything to the bottom left, and I'm just going to take mm -hmm. that comp tower, because that's my strong side comp yeah. tower. Um, so I basically want to leave one tank behind to see if I can hold on to that corner in the top right side on my strong side as long as possible, okay. and then shift all of my stuff to the bottom left uh. um, to make sure that I um, either put pressure so that I can take that comp tower, or at least have an army presence there to fight to deny uh, head on it. against Eagle. Yeah, to deny it, exactly. Okay, Scorched Earth. All right, so let's see what... You get an APC too. So this is, I'm assuming, for the Black Boat over there, not for a stealth. That's exactly right. 
Yeah, so it's, yes. it's worth it. The boosts, plus, you know, this, that black boat's very important for infantry reinforcements, so you don't often see a, a APC built for the explicit reason of uh, refueling a black boat, but okay. You know? So one thing on do. the APC, mm -hmm. uh, the, the APZ, APC, if it's positioned below the mountain there, um, will boost the infantry down onto that city, and that, that actually removes yeah. additional move turn to get to the black, black boat. boat. Yep. So it's double synergy. Okay, there you go. Now you know, folks. Double synergy. But now Rip, he's on the offensive at the top. He actually does not. Oh no, he's gonna enter. He's got to enter with that infantry right there. Yep. Okay, there we go. I was like, what the heck? Okay. And he's yep. Like you say, he's shifting everything except his artillery. You can't really front shift artillery as we mentioned earlier. It's very difficult. Or you can do it, but it's difficult. But it seems he's moving towards the top. He wants to get that corner area. So the tank over there was actually quite smart. Uh, he was he just had at it otherwise. Although you can't attack back into that tank because of the artillery coverage. And the black boat is a blocker. He's now decided the black boat would be a blocker rather than a reinforcer. So honestly, I'm kind of with you. I'd rather use it as a reinforcer than a blocker at this point. Like how is he going to get all infantry up to the north anymore? It's going to be a long slog. Um, but he's starting to get the copter spam. I think at this point, I think he's going to build a copter every single turn of the game as Eagle. He has the income now. It's 2100 to 2300. So you do have that advantage. Uh, it might even get worse. You might be able to get this corner property. It could be 24 to 21. Uh, but he's going to get that, I would assume. So it's probably going to be 22, 24 is probably the end game here is what I'm seeing. And also no comm tower. So I think that's sufficient enough yep. to face off an Eagle. Less, less comm tower, 2K advantage. Good tactical fighting. I think it's enough to face an eagle in the long game. Um, but yeah, you start shifting everything in the south. You, now you capture this property a little bit later. It's going to get interrupted, of course, but why not try? And then you go again for the comp tower. Each time they get attacked, you say, nope, I'm going back. Try me. Uh, so you put your tank really nestled in the corner over here. You really want to hold on to the corner property over there, I see. And also, so maybe you all, is, the APC also refuels the T-Copter, too. You never know. Absolutely. Um, and for the tank in the corner, uh, again, I don't see what I don't see. Um, I know that I got a artillery shot on one tank, uh -huh. and this is a new tank. So I'm not, I didn't really expect him actually to repair that tank because oftentimes Eagle really just wants to get as many units as possible. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes that means you don't repair stuff. Huh. So I'm thinking if there's one tank against one tank, then actually he can't attack that city. Yeah. Um, and I can at least like stall it out for a little bit longer. Um, but it turns out that he has been repairing that tank. Um, so it's a little bit unfortunate for me, but that's the idea there. Yeah, especially for Olaf, you kind of want to have new units rather than healing them up, only to be Winter Fury later on. So I, I, right. I, I understand. Now you're really proliferating copters at the bottom. Recon comes in. Forward forest. Very aggressive. Tank interrupts. Double tank attack. Attacks with the 9 HP first. This is a pretty good attack by Rip over here. And he nestles that in the forest. He's probably going to double artillery it up too. So it's basically unattackable. So Rip has a nice little counterplay over here. He's trying to flip those two properties. Hey, you might have beat him off over here, but, you know, Rip's not out of the game. He's an incredibly strong player. Uh, he needs some counterattack. That's his new plan. Meanwhile, also front shifting. So he's kind of dabbling a bit, um, which is, you know, good in situational uh, affairs. But if you do have a brawl over here, you should beat him because you have such more vehicles over here. Uh, you have two more cop. You have two copters as well. You have copters over here. Copters streaming in. You got recons. Three tanks two artillery he's got one artillery so you're gonna beat him down here that's the thing by dedicating over here you know you're gonna beat him in a brawl over here unless you overextend um so i guess you take that knowledge okay he has a lot of things dedicated i can win over here right isn't that what your thought process is exactly what my thought process is and i have that pesky little infantry on the mountain in the very top right and so i see everything yeah and i see wow two tanks two artillery maybe there's more <laughs> and I know that I've left one tank up there in like an anti-air, but clearly he's committed much more to the top right than I have. Yeah. So now all my stuff's in position on the bottom left. So now it's my time to strike and really go for it. And also you're probably going to take a scorched earth tactic. You attack this infantry to that infantry, attack this infantry to that infantry to prevent these caps for later, I'm, I'm assuming, correct? 
Yes, that's exactly right. Because yeah. um, this is actually a really critical turn. Um, it's all about tempo. Um, I want to try and get the bottom left corner before I lose the top right corner. And so um, what you'll see this turn is I'm gonna set up in a position where either Rip has to give up control of the uh, of the bottom left, mm -hmm. or Rip has to attack into my army, which I believe is going to be bigger. It is, um, yeah. and it's going to it's going to wreck me, but it's also going to give me a ton of charge, and then I'm going to get Winter Fury, uh, yes. and that's going to further stall out um, his push in the top right because all the infantry are going to take hits from the, the Winter Fury. So, yeah, um, trouble capping. I want to set up a dilemma where he's like both choices are bad. Okay, that makes sense. Prisoner's Dilemma, yeah. All right, so Rip, he builds a normal build. You use this <laughs> infantry, uh, his life, to reveal. And then you go you go ham this turn, okay. Don't kill off the recon, unfortunately, but you really want that comp tower. And you're gonna get that property easily, unless he dedicates two vehicles, which he will not. That just doesn't make sense in this context, I don't think. And the Black Bow gets re-upped as well. The APC's coming to rescue him soon. And let's let's actually go back there. You sacrifice your tank because it's you know it's gonna die anyway. Scorch Earth tactics. You attack those infantry. Now they're at four and six, soon to be at two and four after Winter Fury. It's probably gonna happen, if not day fourteen, day fifteen at this rate. Um, and your copter right near the APC, so it could be re uh, re soon. So a good turn by you. I agree. This was a very crucial turn. You you attacked into this though. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, five, six. So this isn't two turns reinforcement time. Uh, yeah. It, oh, it has to be from the top. So you think it was worth it seeing all these vehicles to break the overextension uh, motto and just go into it? Why, why did you think this was a good opportunity to actually go into his territory? Just to ensure that so, comp tower 100%? Yeah. Yeah, so again, it's it's what I mentioned. Um, there's two things that can happen here. One is Rip has too much stuff in the top right, and so he can't really contest the bottom left, and then I just take it off for free. Mm -hmm. but the other one is Rip fights into me, and actually we see very easily from our nice full, full map vision that Rip is actually about as well prepared to counterattack this as you could possibly hope for. Yeah, that's true. Um, but if Rip has even one less vehicle over here, um, it's really a, a kind of a tipping point battle. Oh, but even gonna, if yeah. I just get totally destroyed, I do have two artillery there and I'm gonna get enough charge for Winter Fury. You can see that the yeah, my bar is like halfway it, full. Yeah. He's yeah, gonna so, like, kill even two if of your copters, so. Uh, or at yeah, least significantly, like sure. we can uh, one of the two and kill another. And then he could not quite get charge. Usually it's very difficult to, to get lightning strike on your own turn because you get half yes. the fun. So you, theoretically, he's not going to get lightning strike. So you have nothing to worry about there. So you will be getting Winter Fury first. So this is a gamble on your part. A well-educated gamble. You know, you did your homework first. It's not like a 50%. Uh, it's like, okay, I calculated. 85% chance this works out favorably for me. I'm going to take that calculated gamble. Uh, this is more bold than I would do. I'm this is why I like looking at your gameplay and talking about it. It's a bit different than how I would do it myself. Um, so we'll see what happens. So Rip goes in. He's going to get that free copter kill. Well, not free. Nothing is free in life. Gets this little uh, bite over here. First copter goes down. Tank attacks in. He actually he doesn't interrupt your city over there. I guess he thinks he's going to... I think he was hoping for a roll, maybe? And then... Huh. Now four he against four. I'm not tower. sure. Yeah, it's not a roll. Uh, yeah. So he's just conceding the comp tower. Wow. Didn't think I'd see that. But he's, he just blows you units. the bits up there. Just blows you the bits. Um, let's see with that recon. Attacks in the tank. He sees the artillery. He's just trying to paralyze, uh, you know, paralyze you. But this is not going to be pretty. You're going to have a Winter Fury. And you're going to have these two artillery get two free shots. So yep. this is going to be a nice turn for you. Although all your tanks are dead. You have no tanks. These are two basically dead tanks. Um, you don't have any anti-air to deal with their copters over there. So he has a really strong counterattack, to be honest. You're not quite well yeah. prepared, but you knew this going in. You're like, I'm gonna lose a lot probably, but I will get the comp tower out of this. I will deny this and I will get this property as well. So the economic cost is probably worth it in your estimations, which is why you went for it. 
It was fine until that last tank showed up. <laughs> yeah, I was, this was, was like, yeah, I was really you, hoping you had one tank, tank so to like in. finish them off, but nope, boom, and now you have oh, no tanks at all. So sad. And he puts an APC too. So this, the, he knew. Save the black boat. Got to save the black boat. Um, he didn't even see yours. He just kind of knew too. Okay. When your fear comes in, this is gonna be brutal. Probably knock out thirty thousand right off the bat. Yep. Pretty much. And then get the comp tower. Now, 130, 140 with the power, the superpower rather. Now you have as much uh, attack power as Grim with the comp tower, so this is going to be brutal. A lot of KOs, yeah. if need be. I'm assuming you're going to sack this infantry. Not sack it, but well, it is sacking to, to stop this cap as well. Yep, boom. Get some kills. Copter actually gets one shot with that new amount of power. I'm assuming you're going to capture this property as well. It will not be interrupted unless by the tank, because this infantry cannot reach. The recon can, though, but I think you're going to get that property as well. So it's looking pretty good for you in terms of income. And what are your thoughts on Eagle Superpowers using it into Winter Fury? What are your, it, situational? Do you have a way you lean towards saving it or yeah, using it? Yeah, it's... It's situational. I think in general, uh, you want to avoid it if you can get away with it. Okay. Um, because really the the path to victory for Eagle is um, survive the first Winter Fury to a point where you can still stall the game out even after eating the 20% the damage. Yeah. Um, and then brawl sparingly until Olaf is almost about to get the second Winter Fury, uh -huh. and then unleash an absolutely devastating uh. lightning strike to basically overcharge Olaf's bar before the second Winter Fury gotcha. with all the vehicle buildup that you've been doing. Um, uh. Okay, that makes sense. But I've kind of foiled Eagle's plans here um, with some really good timing because I've hurt all the infantry in the top right corner, yeah. so I'm not losing those properties there. And then also, I've timed the Winter Fury with an infantry push in the bottom left corner. Yeah. So, like, this timing is not an accident. I've been trying to set up for this um, because this is my power spike. If I don't get a really substantial advantage on the board, then Eagle is just going to be able to sit back forever and, you know, build up maybe like 50k less units than me but then the lightning strike happens and I just get absolutely wiped off the board. And mm -hmm. I've been on the other side of this situation where I've been the one, you know, stalling and um, it's it's really strong. So I know okay. how powerful it can be. And that's why I'm being very aggressive with my caps this turn, even on properties that I think I'm very unlikely to get. Okay, that makes sense. I like nestling in that superpower right before the second wave of Fury. A lot of people, they don't know when to use it. Uh, that makes a lot of sense though. You want to overcharge, you know, make sure they don't get the full benefit. So he attacks back into this. He can't really do that much though. It just finishes off a couple units and then kind of tactical retreat at this point. Um, like you said, he wants to save up, keep his units alive for a very strong uh, super strike later or whatever the hell it's called, lightning strike, excuse me. Uh, but you get reinforcement zone for the copter. You're going to get this proper down there super easily. You're going to have a huge economic advantage, not to mention the comm tower advantage. And he also teched up to a Neo tank. Um, I guess at this point, was it, was this calculated? What, why'd you build a Neo tank rather than say three tanks? Was it just the income advantage? The, uh, so one of the things you do is when you get an income advantage, uh, you tech. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason you want to tech is generally speaking, uh, your opponent will need to also tech to deal with your tech, yep. but they don't have money. So they just can't deal with it. Um, but in this situation, um, I know that there's two artillery in the top. Right that's exactly. So it's got to um, go to your to your weak side over here. Uh, no, it's the opposite. Really, actually. you're going to bring um, it towards the artillery. That's exactly right. So the the idea is, what I don't want is I don't want Rip to sit inside his base for the next eight days, uh -huh. and even build uh, units on like 21k or whatever. Mm -hmm. I need to do something to force him to use his lightning strike so that. Because uh, as soon as Rip uses his lightning strike, I'm gonna have charge for another Winter Fury. That's true. Because it's it's gonna it's gonna massacre me. Um, there's just it's you can't stop it. The range is is too much. It's and especially Rip's a really good player. He's gonna get really good uh, 
utilization out of it. So yeah. um, what the Neo Tank does is the Neo Tank forces him to have to use the Lightning Strike because he's going to have to spend a turn moving his artillery uh, into range of the Neo Tank, and then he's going to have to Lightning Strike. Yeah, so I can afford to get rid of it. Charge twenty two thousand. Excuse me. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's my my counter plan to prevent him from actually sitting back forever um, and holding on to this lightning strike until uh, the next CO power for me. I'm going to put that Neo tank out there and I'm going to be like, this Neo tank's going to eat your tank once per turn until you lightning strike. <laughs> and okay. uh, that's going to make him make him fight me. Interesting, not intuitive. I usually, when I see a lot of artillery, I do not send my tech up units in that situation, uh, but it makes sense in this situation. Like I said, situational things change, not, nothing holds true the entirety of advanced wars things change you got to be adaptive so okay interesting i'm glad i asked about that you heal up some units like you said tech up when you have more income heal up when you have more income use those funds um so rip over here he's trying to capture in the corner he will get that so he has some sort of counterplay but he can't stop this cap he can't stop this cap he's about to be down 19k to 27k well he'll get that back so it's going to be 2000 2600 6k income gap two comp towers even if you're eagle, that's a tricky situation to be in. Um, so he just kind of consolidates. He heals up his units. Um, those little small units make sense. What else can you do with this low income? So we'll just go through this turn over here. You actually kill us off, I guess. Just uh, you want to get some charge, I guess, or like bait him into some sort of uh, fight for the uh, lightning strike? Because maybe that's what your thought was. Uh, denying vision actually okay. uh, is the primary reason uh, and a little bit I want to see like where his stuff is mm -hmm. um, to see how far back he is because I'm I'm in this situation where he could lightning strike at any turn and so it's very difficult like you see how far back my stuff is yeah, um, yeah very I'm, defensive even though I'm very ahead in income like I'm in a little bit of a dilemma where I have to be really really careful because lightning strike punishes positioning mistakes yeah. insanely that's true um and so i've got to be i, I just I, I need to know where the stuff is and yeah. so when, when i see nothing here i'm like okay it's pretty unlikely that i'm gonna get lightning strike this turn and also maybe um maybe it'll make him scared to interrupt that cap there because he's not going to have vision. So like, he knows I've got artillery over there. Maybe I've got artillery covering it, even though I don't, but yeah. he doesn't know. So, um, he, yeah, I, would I just want to so well. get some information. Smart. There's a nice fake out you did because you would hundred percent assume there's artillery there, but you actually have it farther back to really bait that landing. Yeah. It was a very smart move. Uh, psychological warfare is part of advanced wars. I do the same. I'm the master baiter after all, like, in this situation, not even baiting. Well, you are baiting him in this sense, but the artillery is not there to punish. It's farther back. So he thinks he's going into a lightning strike. Oh, I'm going to kill all these units. Then he's halfway through. He's like, oh, God. And then he can't use it. Yep. Or if he does, it's a half-assed lightning strike that you can punish. So I like that move right there. Yep. And then you get all your units over here. So now you're dabbling a bit, which is fine. Um, those double copters, you got the income. Hey, get those unit counts up, man more power to you and now you start to front shift actually a bit you whoop oopsie you uh bring your artillery down here but you split up your artillery i guess because he's seen it over here you had the vision denial for this express purpose of bringing this artillery over here i'm assuming you kill that yeah so, so. right now right right now we're playing the corners game right so i've got everything that i could ever want in that bottom left corner yeah there's nothing more that I can accomplish down there. Now, the only bad thing that could happen to me is if I lose the top right corner and yeah. the game somehow equalizes. Yeah. So I want to kind of concentrate into the top right. Additionally, I see a bunch of units in the bottom left there. You see I, that recon kind of suicided in. Um, and I see anti-air in two tanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if I just don't have anything down there, and the lightning strike goes off, then those units are not going to be able to be utilized efficiently. Yeah. Okay, and why did you put this artillery over here? Oh, and goal in this force, and you deny these two properties from going back? Or, yeah, like, it's, this it's artillery just there for, over here for later on. Could have been in this force over here to protect these two properties, but you kept it up here, I guess. You're, you're really not worried about a counterattack here. You're worried about him flipping, it seems. There's no infantry because ah, strong side reinforced. True, true, There's, true. You see I've been denying the infantry. There's one infantry on that entire side right now. <laughs> and look yeah. at how many infantry I have. I've got like eight. 
Yeah. So if worst comes to worst, I can deny uh, counter caps with my own infantry. You have 10 more infantry than he does. That's basically the unit count. It's basically all infantry is the difference right here. So yep. let's look at the stats real quick. Uh, kills to death is pretty equal, actually. Um, but wait, why does it say this? Why is it so close? Probably a lot of combines. Uh, but the Winter Fury damage. A lot so. of 8 HP units. Yeah, yeah 8 HP 8 units. units. Um, but oof. And also the copters, I think you you were able to build 5 units this turn. And he doesn't have enough funds to build 2 copters and 3 uh, ground units. So that's why the unit advantage is so high. 30 to 42. Um, but no, Winter, no uh, Eagle superpower yet. He, he needs more units first. He's not going to in any rush to use it. And he does this double artillery over here. Uh, but you're probably expecting that, if you're perfectly honest. And you have an infantry to interrupt. The, What's up? I know the artillery are in the top right, so I haven't seen them anywhere else. They're probably still there. Okay, fair enough. But your Neo tank is ready. He, he wants to force those artillery to waste their Winter Fury or their uh, Eagle superpower. Wow, that's really aggressive right there. You have no vision at all. You just go gung ho. So uh, why why yeah. did you why did you do that? So what the reason I did that is because um, it's again I'm trying to bait the lightning strike. Yeah. Um, I can get a free tank, and also it's really unlikely that the artillery are already in range to hit the neo tank without moving. Okay. Because one would definitely be in this forest. Yeah. The other well, one could have yeah, been. And it, it could have been, but I had a recon that was suicided there last turn. That is turn. true. That is true. So it's not, it's really unlikely that. that a surprise. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah, unlikely yeah, there's yeah, a surprise yeah. uh, artillery hanging that makes out a there. Lot so, of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. I forgot about that recon. You had a. It was a calculated decision. It wasn't reckless in any yep. regard. And yep, you got your artillery over here in this beautiful spot, defending those two properties. Those are never going to be captured again by Rip. Basically, you build a medium tank over here right, as let's, well. Let's uh, let's pause here. Really okay, quick. sure. Let's pause it. So, um. At the end of this turn, this is my exercise for all you DJs viewers out there. <laughs> if you want to try and pick on me and find my mistakes. So I, I said earlier that 1600 uh, Eagle players are on another level because they punish mistakes with lightning strike, even really small mistakes. And so I challenge you before we go any further on this board, last turn I made two unforced errors that I think are pretty consequential. And so I want you to take the challenge and just kind of pause on this screen and see if you can find what I thought my uh, my two kind of own goals were on this, this turn here. Um, right. And then we're going to play this next turn and you're going to see whether you got it well, right. Let me guess first. Uh, yeah, go for I'm, it. Look, middle first off, like very exposed from the shoulder. These, these, these units here are just kind of free. If you're going to be attacking over here, you would, shouldn't expose yourself on all fronts for for your lightning strike. I feel like if you're going to bait this, keep these hidden. Because if you know lightning strike is coming, don't put everything in range. These copters even maybe even be in range for this anti in two turns. These This just feels like a, a blunder over here. Uh, with regards to up here, it doesn't seem like as much of a blunder. Uh, I can't see anything right off the top of my head. I mean, he's going to get two copter kills. Um, but in the middle, that seems like the blunder in my eyes, uh, just from my perspective. We'll, we'll come. We'll come back to it. We'll come okay. back to it after this this turn. Um, the medium tank. One point about the middle, though. Yeah. About the middle, uh, that had a lot to do with uh, the order that I did everything. Uh, I put all the stuff in the middle before I did the neo tank thing. Uh, um, so I think if I had ended up doing it in the other order, I probably wouldn't have been uh, so aggressive right, in the middle. Okay. But, yeah, yeah. but that, is, that is actually not what I was referring to. Really? Um, it's, it's a lot oh, more subtle. I it's a lot more test. subtle. It's a lot more okay. subtle. Let me let me let me. Give it, well, uh, no, you, you're you're not wrong, but it's okay. it's more subtle than what uh, than what you said there. Uh, the copter is in range of like chaining from an anti air chain here, chain there. Chaining copters is a big one for anti air for me when I'm facing eagle. I don't want to make sure my copters are within six point move of each other typically, unless they're attacking something. Uh, I don't like that. Let's see what else. Uh, reinforcement this tank. I mean, the shoal. I think your terrain is kind of bad. It could be on this city over here. I like this on this forest. Tank is great over here. I don't like this, this shoal tank though. Um, terrain matters a lot. That's my last guess. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see okay. what happens. All right. So, Rip is obviously going to be using uh, Winter Fury. There. I keep saying that. He's going to be using his superpower this turn. Moves his recon in first, as you should. 
And now he sees the chain. Easy chain, 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 chain. You can probably kill off all these copters actually with this copter over there with the superpower. So I'm expecting a very strong, ooh, it's gonna reach as well. It's gonna be on, like I said, terrain. It's gonna be on the silo. It's gonna be harder to kill. Um, so builds it, ooh, look at that feistiness right there. Ooh, look at that feistiness. Look at that feistiness. Um, okay, so nothing too insane. This is going to be a very strong lightning strike. I mean, you have you have started the turn with what? Oops, 190,000 and uh, 190,000. Let's see what it goes down to. Recon first. Kill the Neo tank essentially. Chain. Hit on terrain. Cleaned you up in the middle. This is a very strong lightning strike. My god, you killed off your shoal tank. It was very weak defense. Didn't bother this tank though. It's very strong defense on the on the city. Especially he only has one comm tower. Alright, that was that was brutal. Dang, and you might even flip this. Yeah. That was, that's that's rip coming back right there for you. Oh my god. Sixteen hundred eagles. Wow. Sixteen hundred eagles. Telling you, he's a, yeah, you guys thought the brutal. game was over, huh? Oh, you got the game was over. Look at that. Look at that flip. 32 to okay, 43. Let's... 26 to 37. That's insane. Anyway, go on. What was your what was the what was Yeah, the so let's let's look at the two mis let's look at the two mistakes here. So okay. the first one, so you got one of them right. So one of my copters, <clears throat> excuse me, is positioned really badly on the top side of the map. Um this one right here? below the mountain. Uh, oh, right below. Yeah, it ends right up here. not being that it ends up being the other one, but that the one behind it um, I can move that anywhere I want, and I moved uh, it's the one above that one, actually. This one? I, I think it's that one. Yeah, I think it's that one that ends up moving. Uh -huh. um, and it moves below the mountain, um, but it should be behind the mountain instead of below it. Uh. Um, it would be just as good there, um, and it ends up getting picked off by a chained anti-air for free. Yeah, um, that's just completely unforced error. The second one is in the middle of the map, the bottom copter there. Um, the, the silo. full HP one. Yeah, that one. Oh, no, this one. Uh, it's not the silo. It's, really? No, it's, it's the full HP one. It, no, the full HP. Okay, this one. The, the, one, yeah, the, the one. that The silo is not the problem. Okay. What the is problem it? is I know where the anti-air is, and it's six and six. Oh, you knew where this from was. From the anti-air. You knew, knew where, where it was? was. I I did, because I had the... Um, recon? I, I had the, the recon there. Uh... And, and so and so the the anti air attacked my recon the previous turn, so I knew where the anti air was, Damn. and then I put it I put that bottom copter six and six from the anti air, ah, even though I knew slight. where it was. Yeah. I could have positioned that the copter one square back, and yeah. I would have had a free copter to counterattack with. It's just those yeah. little things, mm. just one square here, two squares there, and it's a two copter flip for free because of lightning strike. Eagle punishes yeah. positioning mistakes. 18,000 right there. Yeah, it's a huge difference. Luckily, you have a Winter Fury, because if you didn't have a Winter Fury here, I'd say he like, pretty much won the game, right? Like, uh, he's going to get the comp tower. He's going to flip this. Well, you might be able to defend here, but thank God you have that Winter Fury, because this is a really brutal turn. Um, yeah, and I mean, look at all the good I've been doing up on the, the board until this point, and then that lightning strike comes out. It's a good thing that I've got the income lead and the comm tower lead, yeah. because if this was a more even game, well, I mean, this is what Eagle does. This is why I like Eagle so much. Yeah, that was impressive, to be honest. Like everyone, viewers, myself included, like, oh, he's, he's done. He's down 6K, he's down two comm towers. Like, there's gonna be a Winter Fury. Still, that was impressive. But let's see where your counter attack is. We're at day 18, this is the first CO power, super CO power, took all the way to 18. He was very patient. The thing about Eagle Copters, though, or Copters in general, in the Winter Fury, he can only move three afterwards. He can trap them. Uh, so I'm assuming you're going to get some follow-up traps on those Copters. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Your medium tank comes we'll in. Interrupt the cap. As you say, you, you work for that income advantage. You got you to keep it. Uh, but you're low on units now. You don't really have any tanks down here as well. To cap. This, this is what, unpunished. He got all those kills. Couldn't fight back. All free. It's a shame that there's no infantry down there. Yeah, exactly. So the good thing, like you said earlier, we're going to talk about that. The reinforcements over here, a lot of times their vehicles, nothing to, nothing to take advantage. It's another thing, a Deej tip. Always have some sort of end goal. 
What is the point of brawling over here? You want to get the properties back. You don't just brawl for fun. You're trying to get income. You're trying to get calm towers, like, but there's nothing to take advantage of that. So, Rip won the battle, but uh, he's got one cop or an infantry over here. He built his own T copter actually last turn, I think, to take advantage of that. He saw how he wiped you off the face of the earth on that turn. Now he's using a T copter to expedite those infantry coming in. So, smart move by him. Although it can only move three move because it's Winter Fury. Um, but will he be able to get the comp tower? Will he be able to get it? It's probably gonna combine, right? Ooh, not even. Okay. All things said and done, you're still behind unit count, but you're ahead on unit value after the turn, uh, just because there's a brutal Winter Fury does a lot of damage. So you're doing pretty good. I, you're still ahead. That was a brutal last turn, but you're able to come in. Oh, that hurts a lot. You have the two palm towers. Copter comes in. That's going to be a one shot. That's going to be a one shot. And then, yeah, this is uh, this is looking rough now. Even though you've lost at the bottom, he has no infantry to take advantage and back off. And if he does have infantry, you will suicide your infantry knowingly into them. Um, yeah, and now that's, uh, that's a lead. Yeah, perfect timing. I didn't even think he'd resign this turn, but, you know, perfect timing right there. Uh, just, you see the state of affairs over here. You keep brawling, but you have no infantry to take advantage. This one's 4 HP, this one's 3 HP. Like, he can't theoretically or realistically, excuse me, capture any properties, and he's going to be fighting at 26 to 20 the entirety of the game. Um, with down a comp tower as well, so. I think it was well played by Rip. I think he had some early missteps with that tank just blindly going in before the recon. He was tilting a bit, perhaps. But then he made up for it all with that brutal Eagle superpower, but it still wasn't enough because you had accumulated such an income lead, unit lead, even with those blunders on your turn. I wouldn't say they're blunders. Maybe they're more mistakes if we're talking about chess turns. Yes. Uh, two copters, 18K, it's not the end of the world. Um, but he was able to do that nice comeback with the Winter Fury and combination. It just, he had no infantry in position. It, maybe if he was able to capture these properties at the bottom, he had a fighting chance, but... Yeah, well played. Uh, that was impressive. Um, most impressive by you, like from the from the get go, just everything was planned. You had branches and ways you could adjust to things. You had that comm tower. That was your whole plan. You were able to actually get this other one that was contested as well. And then Rip, you know, he's a great player. He's able to do a little comeback, but it was too late at that point, in my opinion. Even though the board state looked terrible. But reality kind of comes in a few turns later after the Winter Fury, the reinforcements, the lack of income. Um, do you have any closing thoughts on the game that you think maybe people could learn from? Uh, I think oftentimes when people have uh, advantages, they squander them because mm -hmm. they don't know where they need to go next to capitalize on their advantage. Yeah. And so I think this is a good instructive replay for that um, because as we saw in the early game, uh, I got the... the objectives in the on my strong side yeah but then um i declined to continue attacking into his army at that point i instead go to where my next objectives are which is actually yeah. a front Day shift yep. um and so I, I think that's really important um because if i had attacked into his very defensive position i would have gotten mauled yeah um, and then it would have been really bad for me so yeah you uh, see artillery that's... you want to front shift yeah. this is like another tip i always say if you see a lot of artillery just front shift and crush them elsewhere because the artillery can't really front shift with them um so sorry go on yeah and then the last thing that i'll say about this is um you really need to understand how the co matchup affects the power swings in mm -hmm. the game and this is a matchup where for the first you know, 12, 13, 14 turns, you're playing normal advance wars. Yeah. The day-to-days are basically non-existent. But as soon as the first Winter Fury comes up, everything goes out the window and you're no longer playing happy old advance wars. You're playing Eagle versus Olaf. Uh, yeah. Everything revolves around the superpowers. And so you can see how both myself and Rip really try to play towards the strengths of our CO powers. Yeah. For me, it's timing my captures and being in position to get my captures at a time when I'm strongest right after my first Winter Fury and also um, making sure that Rip's captures are also timed with my Winter Fury so that yeah. I can delay them. And for Rip, it's for retreating when 
he can't really fight and holding on to that lightning strike even though he'd probably you know love to try and counterattack my army yeah. that is ravaging his strong side he would have liked um, to held on to it longer too he gave you a full power bar he exactly. would have preferred you were up here or something and yeah so he's got a clear idea of what he's trying to accomplish and playing to the strengths of his CEOs. So when you get to really high level games, that's what you can expect to see. It's the the strategy behind the decision making that ends up being really impactful, not mm -hmm. just kind of smashing units into each other more efficiently than the other player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you gotta know the macro. It's not just the micro engagements, you know, nice tactical gains. If you're facing a CEO like Eagle, you gotta know more than just tactics if you wanna actually win first time. A higher level Eagle. You can beat a, a, a thousand level Eagle not knowing half the stuff, but face rip, my God, you gotta you gotta know that stuff, Dad. You gotta take some take some notes and study on that. Um, but anyway, thanks for uh, reviewing this with me. I hope you guys learned a lot. I learned a lot from it, actually. I like that. Uh, I always like learning. I go to uh, Laga 2, I go to Ghost Step, and I go to Torjard when I have questions about Fog, and they never disappoint. Um, so I hope you guys learn from it and start spamming all the openings that he just talked about with the T-Copter. Now we're going to see a whole bunch of that in the Globe League, I'm sure. So. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. And uh, maybe we'll have you in the future, too. So thank everyone, Absolutely. thanks for joining, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.